with Dravet syndrome have a very high seizure burden. It's actually very unusual for them to have seizure-free periods longer than three months. So the majority of patients are having monthly uh, seizures and many are actually even having um, weekly seizures. And in our studies, the, the mean number of seizures that people were, the kids were having on a monthly basis was about 30 to 40. We have uh, data now on two of our clinical trials, one uh, that did not allow steropental and the other that uh, required uh, steropental. And in the first study, study one, there were two different doses uh, that were looked at, the 0.2 milligrams per kilogram per day and 0.7 milligrams per kilogram per day. And in the higher dose, so that 0.7, uh, the seizure reduction was around 62%. Um, and the, in the lower dose group, it was around 33%. Um, and then when we further looked uh, at the responder uh, rate analysis, in the higher dose group, 70% of the patients actually achieved a 50% reduction or more, and 50% actually achieved a 75% reduction um, or more. And then the last comment about the treatment response um, is that we then looked at how many patients in the treatment period actually were considered near seizure free. So either had no seizures or a single uh, seizure. And when you combine the low dose and the high dose together, about 25% of patients actually experienced that outcome. So we couldn't have been happier uh, with, uh, with the results. And the 1504 study was largely, uh, largely the same. There were a number of measures that we included in the trial to try and, and look at that. One um, was basically called a, a clinical global impression of change and the family member and the clinician uh, could give a one to seven scale just in terms of how do you think your, your child is doing, either no change, minimally improved, much improved, or very much improved. Um, and so in the study, there were a significantly number, a higher number of patients that reported very much improved or much improved um, on that scale. And we actually feel that that is a more global sort of assessment of things that are just uh, beyond seizures, right? So it's gonna take into account treatment-related side effects, but maybe some of these other um, uh, quality of life measures uh, and cognitive and, and executive functions that we then looked at uh, even further.